What is the deal with U substitution and changing the bounds of integration? Well, it has to do with the awesome graphic that you can see happening up here. So let's consider an integral to think through what on earth is happening with U substitution and why we have to change the upper and lower boundary of our integral when we perform that U substitution. This is another of the black pen, red pen, integration B problems, and it's another fantastic one. Can we compute the value of the definite integral from zero to pi over two of cosine cubed of x, dx of course. To do this, the first thing I'll do is rewrite that cosine cubed of x dx as cosine x times cosine squared x dx. And from there, I wanna use a Pythagorean identity. We're going to take that cosine squared x and rewrite that as one minus sine squared x, keeping of course everything else, the cosine x and the dx. What this gets me is that now I can implement u substitution. I am going to substitute an intermediate variable and let it stand for sine x. When I take the derivative of that variable, du, I get cosine x dx. And that's good because cosine x dx is in my integral right now, cosine x dx. And so that's gonna let me rewrite this integrand, right, in a much simpler fashion. Of course, I'll also be substituting the actual sine x here, but now I can write this as the integral of one minus u squared, again, u coming from the sine x here, du itself, the du being the cosine cos x dx. But you'll notice that the variable of integration has changed here. So we also need to change the bounds of our integration. Essentially, what we want to do is take the original bounds that were in terms of x and change them into bounds in terms of u. So basically, we're just going to plug them in for x in our substituting equation. For our lower bound at 0, sine of 0 is still 0, so that one actually doesn't change. But sine of pi over 2 is now 1. So we need to change our upper bound to 1. Graphically speaking, this this is what was happening with that picture. We're going from a function in terms of cosine of x and changing it into a function in terms of u. The area between these two integrals is the same, but you can see one of them is a little bit shorter because one is a little bit to the left of pi over two. Symbolically speaking, this is just a lot easier to integrate. The antiderivative of one in terms of u is u, and the antiderivative of u squared is u cubed over three. Since we're evaluating this from zero to one, we're going to plug in both zero and one. Evaluating it at zero just gives us back zero, so we can kind of ignore the lower boundary. But then plugging in one is going to give us one minus one cubed over three, which of course is equal to two thirds. And so there it is, the value of this definition an integral is two thirds. To be clear, you don't have to change your bounds of integration. Another choice you have here is to kind of undo your substitution at the end of the process. So remember we said u was sine of x. We could change this to sine x minus sine cubed x over three, and then plug in our original upper and lower bounds, zero and pi over two. Zero still evaluates to zero here, and this time plugging in pi over two, well, sine of pi over two is one and sine of pi over two cubed is one cubed. And so we still get the same two thirds. But there's no reason we have to undo that substitution. If we're not looking for the indefinite integral of cosine cubed of x, if we're not looking for the precise symbols there, there's no reason to undo that substitution at the end. And so a good habit to be in when you're using substitution with definite integrals is just to change your bounds of integration as you go.